Hi, I'm Josie, and this is my Sports Med 3 pro motion analysis presentation on an analysis of a front and a back squat. My athlete is Logan Hobbick. He is a rock climber. He's a volleyball player. He enjoys weightlifting. He's also a skier and a biker. And our goals for this program are to improve his squatting form, look at the pros and cons of each squat, see how you can use each squat to reach its full potential. Logan also wants to improve his vertical jump. Also, with ski season coming up, having a good squat form is going to be helpful if he chooses to train before ski season. To start off, before we did any squats, we did a little bit of a warm-up. So I had him do these quad stretches. As you can see, kind of getting like deep in there and stretching those quads out. We also did a hamstring, a hamstring stretch where he leaned forward and like scooped up at the foot that he stepped out and then some mobility squats where he just kind of sat in a really deep squat position and went up and down from there to kind of warm up his legs before we did the analysis. To do our baselines for this, for the back squat we did 135 pounds which is about his body weight. And for the front squat, we did 105 pounds. The reason we chose these two weights, I talked to Elliot and Elliot said, on average, if you do the max of somebody's back squat and the max of somebody's front squat, the front squat is gonna be 80% of the back squat. And for baselines and just a plain analysis, we you're not gonna do a max or anything. So we did just body weight, kind of a warm up weight. So it's 135 body weight for the back squat, 80% of that for the front squat. And to do the analysis, I used an app called Iron Path, where you can track the tip of the bar. So you can see the line made. Let's go back here. You can see the line made from the tip of the bar, and you can follow the path of the bar. So looking at the baselines, you can see that Logan already has a pretty good front squat and a pretty good back squat form because the lines stay in the same spot. Ignore these white lines, it was a moving of a camera angle, so just focus on these lines right here. And you can see that his front and his back squat are already pretty good. There can be some improvement, definitely, and that's what we're here to do. So you can see on the baselines, I drew out some angle measurements, or not angle measurements, but some lines. So if you look at this middle line right here, this red line, this is what it, the line of force is. And the line of force is kind of the direction that the barbell is moving. Ideally, you want this line of force, which is going to be the tip of your barbell, kind of straight down. You want that to be over the middle of his foot. You can see this is kind of a little bit more forwards in both the front squat and the back squat. And then the other lines that I drew, you can see one goes to the knee and one goes to the hip. Those are there. Then you have what is called the moment arm. The moment arm is the distance between the line of force and the joint line. So you can see this purple line here is the moment arm for the hip, and this blue one here is the moment arm for the knee. And compare that to a back squat, you have the moment arm for the hip in purple, the moment arm for the knee in blue. It was hard to get them exact, but this is just to give you an idea. You can see in the front squat that the moment arm is longer going towards the knee, and in the back squat the moment arm is longer going towards the hip. This shows you that a back squat is going to target your posterior leg muscles. So you have hamstrings and glutes, and the front squat will target your quads because your hip controls your hamstrings and your glutes more than your knee controls your quads. Hamstrings are gonna go to both, and glutes, all three muscles are going to go to both squats. It's just more targeted for hamstrings and glutes in the back squat, more targeted for quads in the front squat because of the moment arm. Comparing this to kind of a professional back squat, back squat and front squat, 
you can see how this one here, this line of force goes towards the middle of this guy's foot. And then if you were to draw a line here, it would go to this guy's, the middle of his foot. And again, you can see back squat more, the moment arm for the hip is going to be longer than the moment arm for the knee. And again, kind of same thing here. He's in a super deep squat right here. And then after I had Logan's to kind of get the line of force to go directly over the middle of his foot to help him do that, I had Logan do his front squat and his back squat. Same weights, 105 for front squat, 135 for back squat. Do those standing up on a couple plates just to get his heels up so he can get into a much deeper squat. So starting with the front squat, you can again see the path of the barbell. It's making the same shape, same spots every time. Same for the, and that's the front squat. And then you can watch the back squat. Um, I do want to mention before we filmed these two videos, the after videos, um, Logan did his leg day right before, so he was pretty sore. So we didn't do any maxes or anything with this motion analysis because I don't want to kill my patient's legs. And then if you look, the angles were a little bit different in these second videos because we were filming in Logan's garage. So it's so I adjusted these lines a little bit just because it was weird angles and I wanted to get a little bit more of an accurate look at this. So you can see how putting his heels up on the blocks improved this line of force now it goes a little bit more directly over the middle of his foot on both squats um the paths of the barbell stays pretty much the same before and after um and then again front squat we have the moment arm of the knee and that's a little bit longer than the moment arm of the hip and the same thing here in the back squat the moment arm of the hip is going to be longer in the knee, again, targeting those muscles. And then again, compare that to the professional. You can see how, again, putting, especially putting his heels up on the blocks helps him get to a much deeper squat here. He's not as deep here as this guy. And then you come here and he's a lot deeper. The blocks are allowing him to do that. Same thing for the back squat. What I learned, the front squat is a primary lift targeting mainly the quads. Hamstrings are also used in, the in this lift, just not the main muscle group. And the moment arm again shows how much force is applied to the knee. Back squat, again, it's a primary lift targeting mainly the hamstrings and the glutes. Quads are used in this lift, again, not the main muscle group. The moment arm shows how more force is applied in the hip, explaining why hamstrings and glutes are going to be used more in a back squat. Thank you.